Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. We hope you had a great summer. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Sarah Zarnomsky. Here's your news now. Welcome Week at Cabrini is full of activities and entertainment. The Campus Activities and Programming Board is hosting events all week long. Stop by Grace Hall at 8 p.m. on Wednesday night to see magician Peter Bois or stop by Jasmine's Friday night for Welcome Back Bingo. Now through October 13th, the Seaport Museum is offering kayak and rowboat rentals on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Boat rentals are available from 4 to 8 p.m. on Thursdays and Fridays and from 2 to 8 p.m. on Saturdays. Rental prices range from $8 to $15 per hour. For more information, visit www.phillyseaport.org. Wondering what's been going on with the men's soccer here at Cabrini? Here's Kelly Manapello to fill us in. I am Kelly Manapello on Location for Location, giving you a preview of this year's men's soccer team as well as a recap of last year. Last year, the season ended. We lost in penalty kicks uh, in the NCAA tournament. We won our CSAC tournament, though, which was good. Um, if we would have won last year, it would have been the first time Cabrini soccer, men's soccer, has gone past the first round in the NCAA tournament. It's been pretty tough. Probably the least tough out of all the preseasons, just because our bodies broke down a lot. And uh, we took it easy the last couple days. Um, the class is approaching. Start out our first games against King College. Um, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. Um, we have a pretty tough non-conference schedule this year. Uh, we play Scranton on Saturday. Um, you know, they only lost maybe six or seven games last year. They're going to be a tough team as well. Um, but we were preseason ranked number two in the conference. Um, Newman's number one, so they're going to be tough in conference when we get there. Um, you know, we expect to do well. You know, our goal is to definitely win the conference again make it back to the NCAA tournament. I think that we're going to be really good. I think we'll be better than last year. Um, our goal is to win the CSAC championship again. And uh, my personal goal for us would be to win an NCAA, champion, or NCAA tournament game for the first time, uh, Cabrini so men's soccer. Uh, hopefully everyone comes out for the Easter game here. I think that would probably be the best, the best time at least. And that was your trip around the block. So Kevin, what else is new in sports this week? Well, football season is right around the corner, so let's check in with what the Eagles are doing. The Eagles defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars by a score of 31 to 24 in their third preseason game on Saturday. In what was his final preseason tune-up, week one starting quarterback Michael Vick completed 15 of 23 passes for 184 yards with one touchdown and one interception. The Eagles close out the preseason on Thursday against the New York Jets. With the preseason winding down, head coach Chip Kelly acknowledged there are some difficult decisions ahead for the team. Linebacker Jamar Chaney and safety Kenny Phillips were among the first 12 players cut from the roster on Sunday. The 75-man roster must be reduced to 53 for the season opener on Monday, September 9th against the Washington Redskins. The Phillies were defeated by the New York Mets on Tuesday night by a score of 5 to nothing. Kyle Kendrick suffered the loss, allowing five runs in six innings. Mets pitcher Jonathan Neese helped provide four of the runs, scoring the first and driving in three with a bases-clearing double in the sixth. The Phillies and Mets close out their series on Thursday. Additionally, the Phillies have had to address several injuries as the final month of the season approaches. The team has moved first baseman Ryan Howard and pitchers Jonathan Pettibone and Michael Stutes to the 60-day DL, thus ending their seasons. The Phillies have six players on the 60-day DL with season-ending injuries. Tune in next week for a preview of the Eagles' season opener, as well as the first results for Cabrini Sports on the 2013 fall season. Now here's Sarah with your trip across the nation. President Obama sat down with CNN and discussed the new three-step plan for lowering college costs. He said the first part of his new plan is to create a new system of ratings for colleges so that parents and college students know which schools actually graduate students on time, which are worth the amount of money you pay for tuition, and which colleges lead to good jobs right after graduation. 
The second part of the president's plan is to establish a relationship with those colleges that do interesting things to help lower the cost of tuition. The last part of the plan has been effective before in helping students manage their debt after graduation. This new plan is designed to help students focus on getting their degrees and a good job instead of worrying about their debt. The Yosemite wildfire is continuing to cause havoc as it continues to grow in size. After 11 days, it had grown to 234 square miles long, and with the wind increasing, it is predicted to grow. It threatened San Francisco's water and power supply, the sequoia trees, and several towns nearby. At one point, there were over 3,500 firefighters on the front line trying to take control of it. So far, 23 structures have been destroyed by the fire. Have you ever texted while walking and found yourself in the middle of the street? Well, you aren't the only one. According to ABC, in the past seven years, more than a thousand people have been treated for serious injuries due to walking in an intersection while texting. In Fort Lee, New Jersey, police officers have started handing out tickets to those who jaywalk and text at the same time. Other cities have also passed laws to keep their pedestrians safe, including Philadelphia. So remember what mommy taught you, pay attention and look both ways before you cross the street. A new school year means new students. Our own Jamie Vigiano spoke with some of the freshmen and orientation leaders to see how their first week has been going. We're here at the freshman picnic, just one of the many events the freshmen can attend during orientation week. Let's check in with the class of 2017 and our OL leaders for the week to see how the events are going. Orientation's been great so far. It's really pretty much just as much fun as all the orientation leaders told me it would be last year. And that's why I chose to do it. I mean, I want to give a freshman or the freshman class, I want to give them what I got out of it. And I mean, that's what made me love Cabrini was the orientation program. Moving was, it was pretty good. Um, I'm living in East Residence and it was tough getting all our stuff in, but like we had a lot of help from the students here, so it wasn't too bad. Um, I'm living in East Residence and I live in the fourth floor and it was pretty easy. I mean, we had a lot of people helping us, so it wasn't too bad. I would say the hardest part about orientation uh, well, because I hate steps, definitely carrying everything up uh, for other people. I'd have to say the hardest part about orientation is definitely the flash mob. That took like four days of practice, but it was worth it. We have Playfair, which is a great opportunity for the entire freshman class to meet themselves <laughs> and interact and make friends. Then after that we have a hypnotist. I personally, I will get hypnotized tonight. The favorite part of orientation was meeting with the advisor and seeing the people in my group and making new friends. My favorite part of orientation is the food. I liked when we um, split off into our groups and we like met with our orientation leaders and um, I'm in the honors program so I got to meet with Dr. Primiano and Dr. Wright I think and I, I love Dr. Primiano. I already met him before but I think that was my favorite part. My favorite part about orientation so far has uh, probably definitely been the training. Uh, the training for orientation, it was long and it was hard, but made so many new friends and I've had so much fun and everyone in here is just so awesome. I'm just really glad I had the opportunity to do it. So probably uh, the most fun is just being here because I'm surrounded by great people at a great place, so I couldn't really ask for any more than that. Seems like orientation was a great time this year. That's it for me. I'm Jamie Vigiano on location for location. That was your trip across the nation. So Val. Tell me about the VMAs. I heard they were scandalous. Well, Miley Cyrus seemed to be a little bit out of control, but let's take a look. The 2013 MTV Music Awards went off with a bang Sunday night. Lady Gaga had everyone moving and grooving, opening up the festivities with a Gagafied self-tribute. While former Disney star Miley Cyrus left the audience uncomfortable with her risque moves giving herself the twerking queen title, performing her new hit single, We Can't Stop, which earned her more than 300,000 tweets per minute, surpassing the blackout Beyonce created at this year's Super Bowl. However, the biggest moment had to be NSYNC's reunion, along with Justin Timberlake's refreshing performance. Recently announced, Ben Affleck is set to star as Batman in the Man of Steel sequel. This is the first time Batman and Superman will be sharing the big screen. While Warner Bros. executives and producers are thrilled with their choice, Batman fans seem to have negative responses. Do you think Ben Affleck has what it takes to continue Batman's legacy? 
tweet us at Location News. In other news, reality star Khloe Kardashian and her husband, former LA Lakers forward Lamar Odom, have been on a rocky patch these past few weeks. Recent rumors outed Odom as a cheating husband opposed to the loving husband fans thought they knew. Despite recent rumors, neither Khloe Kardashian nor Lamar Odom have filed for divorce. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with Nicole for our news around the world. Secretary of State John Kerry condemned the use of chemical weapons against civilians in Syria, calling it a moral obscenity that could soon bring a military response. Kerry's comments come five days after the attack killed hundreds of civilians near, near Damascus. Both sides accused each other of carrying out the massacre, but a senior U.S. official said over the weekend that all signs point to the Syrian government. It is undeniable that chemical weapons were used, Kerry said. This is about the large-scale, indiscriminate use of weapons that the civilized world long ago decided must never be used at all. United Nations investigators are in Syria trying to determine officially whether chemical weapons were used in last week's attack, although video and photographic evidence strongly indicates the use of chemical weapons. Mudslides killed at least 13 people after Fernand slammed into the east coast of Mexico. State media reported this on Monday. Fernand was a tropical storm when it made landfall late Sunday, bringing heavy rains. The storm quickly fizzled into a tropical depression and had dissipated by Monday afternoon, forecasters said. But even as it weakened, authorities in the Gulf of Mexico said the storm brought heavy rains that caused deadly mudslides in several locations. All of the deaths were caused by mudslides that buried homes. Location got the chance to sit down with the college's interim president to discuss the selection of a new president, the mission of the college, and the class of 2017. Let's take a look at this location exclusive. Selection of a president is the Board of Trustees' responsibility and duty. So a committee chaired by the chair of the board, Tom Nerney, is working with a national search consultant to service candidates that might be a good fit for Cabrini. I think that colleges are like a company that has a product to sell to a customer. I'm sure that's not a very popular expression in higher ed, but with my background in corporate America and in retail banking and commercial banking, you really need to match up what your audience wants with what you provide them. So I think there's a great deal of, um, not concern, but we have to pay attention to what is it that students want as careers. I think the other really, really important thing is that we have to provide an environment to prepare you for the workforce, if indeed that is where you want to go, as opposed to graduate school. Um, and we have to help you to find a, a, a job after graduation, or we want to help you find a job after graduation. So we want to put resources toward making our graduates successful just the belief in the mission that it is lived by everybody who works here and has any kind of relationship with us. And I think that mood, that atmosphere, um, then is very attractive to students. And when I went to the freshman barbecue in August and I spoke with some freshmen who were going to be coming uh, last Friday, um, I said to them, what was it what is it about this place that, you know, just made you want to come here? And all of them said, it's ju I just love it here. I feel at home. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Sarah Zarnowski. Make sure you stay up to date with us on our social media platforms by simply searching Location News. Have a wonderful week, Cabrini.